Uh, my name is Joseph Wondrous. I'm professor of engineering, architecture, and computer science. This is our eighth annual end of the year critiques in architecture. And um, we have uh, three judges, one more coming. Uh, Brian Falcon, a res registered architect, lead uh, certified uh, professional, has been helping us for almost 15 years now with our architecture here. Uh, Dr. Pat Ricci, professor of art history and the director of fine arts. And she's been instrumental in helping uh, create everything we have here in architecture. And Christy Arnold, uh, professor of art, and, uh, and she's gonna be instrumental into the future, I would hope, in architecture. And then uh, Dr. Atwood should be joining us. He's the Dean of Faculty for the School of Engineering, uh, Math and Computer Science. Let's share a screen. Uh, so this is my website full of engineering architecture. I'm 60 years old, did mostly architecture until age 30, then a lot of computer engineering things. We're talking about architecture today. And so in, in here, uh, you'll find lecture series and things and other things that uh, we've had uh, three dozen architectural minors since Dr. Ricci and I created that over 10 years ago with the help of Brian Falcon. And uh, we have three individualized majors now graduating as of this May. And so student projects is what we're gonna look at here. I've got them all up on the web now. And this is the present project we're doing now. And this is uh, on the syllabus here. This is something we've done before. Um, this is part of uh, the master plan that probably will get done in uh, 1999. Around here, we paid $300,000 for uh, Dirk and Essen to do a master plan for us. And this is from that. This is actually updates that, we, that they've done uh, since then. And so this is some prime real estate here. Uh, we've had previous contests in here, including uh, two, three years ago with 12 judges, uh, including one of the trustees, a couple other architects and engineers <clears throat> and senior people. And this is a real thing. So this was even our last president, President McCormick was talking to the high companies about doing this. And uh, it's been off the radar for a little bit, but this is probably gonna become a real thing. This I'm on a committee where this kind of stuff is discussed now. Uh, it's not on the radar just now because of a lot of other priorities that have come about because of COVID and other things. But if anything's gonna get built next on campus, it's very likely this kind of thing. This is prime real estate. The campus slopes to the north, which is not ideal for sun, well, except for this one spot here slopes down to the south. And this is very nice up on a hill. And the students have been uh, charged with a project to make uh, not only a cluster of buildings up here, but also a piazza going down to uh, the library and kind of making a quad and getting rid of some of the problems of this uh, uh, conflict between pedestrian and uh, vehicle traffic that's right here and moving the road up here to Cherry Street, which was also part of the master plan uh, from back long ago. So I won't go through all that. That's the project. Uh, whoops, going around in circles. So moving uh, Cherry to Cherry Street from uh, Cedar Street, which clears the way for making this um, real estate here more desirable down to the library here like this okay so to the student projects uh, firstly we so what the students could submit in a number of forms some of them did multiple forms first will be um, uh, Ruth Jacob and I'll man the controls here and the students can stand up here with a physical pointer or laser pointer if they like this one works and um, and I'll just work the controls. And so I think uh, she would, uh, or we want the PowerPoint or? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we'll do PowerPoint. Okay, I'll bring that up. And you can just tell me when to advance the slides. So this is an overview of my exterior housing project. My name is Ruth Jacob. I am a civil engineering major and an architectural studies minor. So this is the site in question. Um, the first stages of this project is the site analysis. So I took photos at each one of these locations and the numbers to know what order I present them in. They're all in this presentation. Um, over here, ah, here we go. Over in this area, this is where it will be like a new academic quad. My initial plan was that I wanted to build kind of from here, but I've since kind of moved it up towards here, which I'll show you later. So this is the first image. This is right across from the Bowers Writer's House. When I originally toured the site, I really liked these big defined trees and you can see them in quite a few of the paints and it actually goes around that 
property. So there's these two across from the writer's house. That's the road up to the writer's house. Next slide, please. Um, this is another view of that. And then this is that back entrance. And you can see there's still these very nice, nice established trees. And I, I thought they would be really nice to add to the ambiance of what I was going for. I really do like make sure and incorporating that into my designs. This is looking into the, uh, the woods from the back section facing towards like over that side of campus. Um, another thing I noticed about this was that there was a lot of dead wood in here. There's a lot of sort of sad looking trees. Um, just a thing that I, I took note of when I was finding where to put this. So I thought maybe it wouldn't be so much of a shame to take some of those out and foster new growth somehow. Um, another thing I noticed was that it was very damp in there, which is why I didn't choose to build down in here for design there. Um, and you can see over there, this is towards the front. You can kind of almost see over in the background. Um, but there is quite a bit of water in this area, which is why I kind of pushed my whole design forward. And there's another picture of that. This is the south facing slope, and all of my site analysis photos were taken sort of down in that corner. Um, Founders is to the left here. And this is where I ended up placing my fence. So Steinman was kind of my muse for this. I wanted to design something that was architecturally congruent with the rest of campus. So I wanted to use the, the, the brick facing, the uh, traditional columns, the Greek Roman pediments. Um, so I, I did a, an initial sketch of what I wanted that to look like. And Revit doesn't quite embody that as much as I would have liked to, because I couldn't figure out how to get those specific details in. But the next slide shows what I was doing. Uh, so I did incorporate these columns. It is kind of a rough sketch, but I had the columns here. I have broken pediments over each one of the doors. I was aiming for a cluster of five housing um, units and then five of those to accommodate for 100 students. So each one of these would be a different sort of quad sized living quarters for students. And then up top, I would have a balcony and sort of like French doors to allow access to that balcony. And then I also wanted to incorporate these lanterns that are all over campus. I really particularly enjoy them, especially the one that hangs in front of Steinman. So I thought that would kind of tie things together, especially for like that center building. And you'll see in my, uh, my later plan how I have those laid out. So this is how I laid out my buildings. Um, I was kind of going for a royal crescent in the Bath England kind of thing, which I learned about in architecture history. Um, so I wanted all five of these to be orchestrated like this. And then maybe either at the center of each one of them or the center of the like the center building to have that, that nice hanging light. So this is the solar for this is the summer of solstice. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it has that, that solar effect. Yeah. And then this is a closer photo of what I was able to accomplish in Revit. Initially, I did update it since then, but this is kind of the perspective from the front, and then that's a, a zoomed in of the front of one of them. This is how I lay out my, my floor plans. This is the first floor. So to accommodate four students, I had two bunk beds and then four of these dressers. It's a little cramped. It's not exactly what I was hoping for, but I was hoping that it would foster a sort of better sense of community among um, like housemates. And then I have a bathroom on the first floor. So it is opposite of what the quads are currently laid out as. And if you go to the next slide, you can see that I have all of the communal living space on the second floor, so that the balcony is more easily accessible to everyone and not just to the person I'm, you know, living on that side. So I have a little kitchenette and a little dining room table. This is the top of the stairs here, it's a little bumpy. Um, and then I have a little living room. These are just other views. This is the, um, the bedroom. So you can see those bunk beds a little better because looking just straight down, you, it looks like some singles. Um, and then that's the other one. So this is what it looks like situated on the site plan. Um, this road currently does not exist, but I thought it would be nice to keep that. That was from Colton's original site plan that he designed for class. Um, this is Founders, and then this brings it right here so you can see kind of proximity. This is where Speaker Street currently is, but obviously that would the plan would be to get rid of that and move everything towards the back. My other plan was that I wanted to have some kind of nice communal space in the center here. I was thinking like a 70s conversation pit kind of thing. Because um, one of the things I noticed about campus is that there's a lack of outdoor space to 
work on things that have access to like an electrical outlet because everything that you were assigned has to do with either a Canvas submission or typing on a Word doc. So I thought it would be nice to have a space where you could access that electricity, but also spend time outside in a book. So this is just a short clip of what it looks like on the site plan that's designed. Um, yeah, there's a little video. So it just kind of shows where it's a lot. Um, it shows where it's oriented with respect to everything. So like there's founders, there's Brinzer, um, there's Gopher, my library is there, the DSC. Closer to see those walls. I did have a brick face and I added texture to the roof. Um, I changed the color of the columns and I tried to make it look a little more congruent, even though I couldn't get those nice dork column shapes. <laughs> but this is my Any questions? How many people are in each of the separate buildings? I'm, I'm trying to figure out from your plan and your doors there. Yeah, um, if you go back to um, my floor plan, I guess. Well, actually, this is fine. So I have five separate, like, quad sized living quarters in one block. So okay. each one would have four students. So in one of these, it would be 20, and then for five, it would be 100 students total. Oh, okay. Uh, that was part of the specification too. Yes. Was 100 students? Some some students went over, but that's fine. But it was generally to be 100. Yeah, I'm currently living in a quad right now, so I took the dimensions of where I'm living to kind of give me the dimensions of how these would be structured. And the college as a whole too, and the trustees have been talking about housing more like the quads, which are apartment style, for mm -hmm. their students, even graduate students, um, would be the idea for occupational therapy and physicians assistant on the graduate programs. Okay, um, no more questions? I like how you address nature when you were doing your assessment. And there's, there's two trees, which I think were very, it has a nice strong emphasis in this. Where, like related to where this, because I'm not, I've been here much times, but I'm not real familiar with where, like from your site plan, and I think you can easily jump back to that slide. Uh, like sure. where is that, or, or even in that view, where is this location? Yeah, like where are those two trees and like that? Yeah. Um, so on the site plan, the original trees that I outlined were over here, actually. Um, okay. I ended up, see, because I originally ended intended on using this backspace, but yeah. once I realized kind of how, how wet it was, I was kind of worried about you know, foundations yeah. and stuff like that. So I pushed everything up here. But my intent to kind of keep with that um, that natural appeal is that I have all of the bedrooms. I don't know if you noticed in my, my floor plan drawings, they would be placed towards the back. So you would be facing this tree line to have a more sort of secluded, Bedroom where it would be quieter away from campus and you'd be able to see which trees were away from campus. So even though those trees and stuff that I took were not directly included in my design, it's kind of the transition of what yeah. it's Comments also from the judges, I think. Good. Thank you. Next is uh, Issa, Issa Abdul Rahman, and um, my, or a graphic design major yeah. with the minor in architecture studies. And I, I, I can put people's LinkedIn things to, to just real quick if you like. So uh, as long as that doesn't take too long. Oh, no, I need to that. Okay, we won't do that. Uh, okay, so do you want me to just start the video? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's kind of it's kind of fast paced, so I'm gonna try to pause it if it's fast. Okay, just say pause if you want. I can go back real okay. quick. Sorry. Okay. Um, also, can you increase the quality? Sure oh, um, hmm. let me Less see. Uh, let's see. So it's a speed, yeah. I think it tried. Uh, Better than that, I guess, but it seemed to. Um, I guess this is a good one. Okay. Just wait. 
Um, okay. I could go back to the okay. Um, so this is I made kind of like a replica of the area of Cedar Hill. Um, this is the, the top of the hill, um, similar to roofs. Um, it's actually I made it in the front. Um, I'll keep that again. Okay. Would you like you can maybe do the controls yeah. here? That'd be easier then. Yeah. Okay. And the shades go down a little oh, bit. Sure. Help. You got a lot of yeah. light yeah. down to the screen. Oh, that one there. Right, we can start here. Um, this is a stairway coming up from the pathway, um, going up towards the, the forest area. Um, in this area, this is where founders in the Bower Center would be. Um, right here is Brenzer. So we have, um, I decided to keep the street here. Um, since I asked a lot of people, they said that this is an easier way to get to most parts of campus, such as the BSC, um, wind driving, as well as the um, apartments and even founders. Um, even though there's a lot of traffic on this road, it's, it seems like it's very important. Um, so instead of getting rid of the road, I decided to add staircases here, similar to um, how the bridge near Leffler is crossing from Brown Lot to Leffler. Um, you just go across the street and then go straight up the, the stairway. Um, I thought that was a similar concept. Plus, uh, we'll probably add more um, walkways here so that cars will have to stop and wait for the students to get past. Um, this one this is a view coming from around the library. Right here is Founders. This is Renzer and this is Ober. Um, so on your way, walking to the BSC, this would be the view. Um, so it's directly in that vicinity. So it's not too far from campus or uh, the campus area. So you can walk um, straight from, from that section to the library or from there to the gym um, without having to travel too far. All right, this is a first person point of view. Um, this will be looking at the library, um, friends are, actually this is the BSC, the library, and then this is over, over here. And here's the walkways. I've decided to make the walkways more of a, a boxy shape um, so that there's more space, um, similar to roofs. There's a lot of space right here for activity outside, um, as well as over here and over here to give it more of a, a communal feel into it. Um, this is my main building, which is um, four, four stories high, uh, the main floor, and then each other has um, dorms and each, each other has rooms in them. Um, on the sides, which are the same, um, but just have different roofs. They fit um, about 20, 26 students, depending on how the rooms are set up. Um, each room is on the first floor, so they're both uh, one-story buildings to keep, uh, to, to change it up to as well as um, for students who might have disabilities or might get injured and need to move into those dorms um, to make it easier on traveling. So first, we're gonna go into the first building, which is the main building. All right, this is us, uh, the two dimensional or uh, two point of view, um, view of the building. Uh, the roof is pretty interesting. I got this from uh, the first church uh, by Franklin Wright. Um, he had this triangle roof that I thought was pretty interesting to add in design. It gave it more of a modern feel to it, um, as well as made it look a little bit more unique than most stuff on campus. This is another view. Um, 
we also create some nice shading coming from this direction. Um, the sun will be coming towards this area right here, um, towards me, and there'll be shade on this side of the building. This is the top view. Um, kind of looks more like a, I'll say a trapezoid um, shape. It's flat at the top and it has a easy way to get runoff um, without hitting like the students or anything that at the bottom. Um, so this roof is pretty big. So good shade and good runoff. So here's the side view um, of the room layouts. You have uh, at the bottom, this is, oh no, this is actually the second floor. Um, down here is the kitchen area and the scene area um, for community living. These are triples in the front, um, same layout for each room. So there's six triples. On this side, um, going down to the kitchen again, and there's singles with bathrooms inside of them. So there's four singles. Um, and then there's singles at the top, so one on each side um, without a bathroom. And then these are doubles. This is the over overhead view. Um, this will be the bathroom area. This will be split into male and female. Um, there's three showers, um, three stalls, and then a sink. Um, and it's the same on both sides. Uh, these are the doubles and a single right here, and then two triples and single doubles. Um, all the rooms are furnished. And here's a first person point of view of it. So right here is the kitchen area. We have the vending machines on the fridge and everything. And we kept it in the open space to give it more of a communal feeling. So when people are cooking, it's not like there's a small door we have to go through. Um, we also kept it with large windows um, to kind of give it more of an outside feel um, to make people feel a bit better, better when they're cooking. Um, also, if there's like an emergency, it's near the doorway uh, to get anything out. Here's the, the living area. We have uh, two couches and a TV for the small section uh, with these big windows to kind of also show the outside more. Um, so this is a view of one of the rooms, the single, uh, the, dress, the dresser, wardrobe, desk, um, the bed is in this corner right here. This is the bathroom. Uh, first thing was the toilets and the, the sink. Uh, water showers are upstairs, um, but this is more for personal use or like emergencies. This is the another living area. We have a pool table and a TV. Um, There's also some feedback from students. They were like, we really should cut Watch TV at the same time as like, do our activities. Um, so we put a pool table there next to the TV so they don't have to worry about uh, going all the way to the other side to watch TV. Um, these are two seats um, just for like studying or anything, along with some beanbag chairs. And then the stairs um, are a spiral similar to my staircase um, with the big windows. Here's a double. Um, this is that a, it can be laid out in different ways, but this is the best way I think it should be laid out uh, with seats or wardrobes. This is the bathroom. And here's the triple. Um, the triples have like larger windows as well. Um, to give them more, some more space since it might feel like it's a little bit more cramped uh, since there's more people in one room, um, and more furniture. So the windows kind of open up that space. Um, beds are set up like this, um, but it can be rearranged. So it'll be movable furniture. This is the other one. All 
right, and then we're going back to the campus. So you just left that dorm. This is your view of everything. Um, and then here goes the side ones or the, the one story buildings. Also, um, there's a lot of space back here for like recreation. Um, say if you want to play any sports or throw a frisbee or anything back here, um, instead of having to be in the front. Um, I decided to keep the trees here because I feel like getting rid of all those trees would be kind of a bad thing for the environment. Um, it's also giving more like a, uh, a more nature um, area. Yeah, this is how the back will look. This is the, the stairway, which is built in the back. Um, and then you could easily travel from one building to the next through the back or through the front of the building. Um, this is all a human perspective too. This is the front of my first building um, of the two sets. Uh, I created this more of a triangle um, roof with a, a overhang on each side. This is a side angle with um, eight rooms on each side. This will be the inside area uh, where you can put um, a TV or even like a sit, sit area. Uh, here is the bathrooms and this is the, the bedrooms. See, so similar to the other ones, uh, these are doubles. Here's the bathroom view, the sink, the showers, and the um, stalls. This is the overhead view. Um, so there's, like I said, there's eight on each side. So 60 rooms um, with this large area of space um, for people who may have disabilities, such as being in a wheelchair or um, even like crutches or anything like that. Uh, the bathrooms are on each side, which will make it easy to access. Um, from one place to other. Uh, these are the, the doorways. Um, you can come out the left side or the right side, uh, depending on where you're going. Here's another layout of the room. So these are doubles. Um, and then the bathroom is connected between both of the rooms uh, to give a little bit more separation and privacy. Um, so there's not rooms straight connected to each other on each side. Um, as well as the bathroom being here, um, you can have different people going in. Uh, and they're flipped on each side too. So there's bathrooms here and here. This is the roof of my other design. Um, I kept it more of a straight triangle rather than a doubled. And on top of this, uh, this is my celestial window design I did for another project. Um, for this class and the thermal wall. Um, that was actually included here. This shows um, the way the sunlight goes in from the summer Celsius to the winter Celsius. Um, this is a part of a house with the, the celestial window here and then the regular windows here. All right. So as you can see, the, the light moves um, up and down depending on what Celsius is at. Um, this is the winter. And this is the summer. So the summer makes it move down more. Uh, this is at a different angle. I believe it's like a 40, 45 degree. Um, the sunlight comes in and hits the ground right here rather than hitting um, straight down. And then here's the winter where the, the sunlight hits the thermal wall here and it doesn't hit the ground here. Um, so the sunlight comes straight from here, more of a, uh, about a 75 degree angle. Um, and the light is only shown here during the, the winter. 
That's everything. Any questions? Spring again. We have to watch it while we, while we ask questions, I guess. I have a question, but I think my comment is that um, the presentation is very, uh, I think, appealing. The colors that you use, the sky, the platform, the, the building. You did a really nice job. Thank you. I think you touched on a few comments in your presentation that I think are really good. Um, one, to, it's good to see a 3D visualization like this. It really helps the, the dialogue. But looking at some of, you know, you're, you're using the building form itself to help with some energy efficiency and sustainability things. So like your shading, that's you know, potentially helping to keep your building cooler. You got a very large roof, which can house all kinds of solar panels on there to help get renewable energy on site. And you mentioned um, potential for, for rainwater as well. Yeah. So if you know, that rainwater can be collected on that roof and used for your toilets and other non potable uses, which would be a really good use for that. Um, also, <clears throat> appreciate the daylighting analysis you did with the thermal wall. I think that's it's a good use of free energy. So, good job. Thank you. Yeah, tell me about the thermal wall. wall. Where is that? Is that okay. in these buildings or is that kind of a separate thing? Oh, uh, this is a separate thing, okay. um, but it could be included. Mm -hmm. um, for probably like the one story buildings, mm -hmm. since the roof is is more of a, it's set an angle, but we could mm -hmm. include that in there. Um, the but this is- The clear story window was an early project, right? Yeah. And I told the students they could tack on something that they're proud of and then the okay. main project. Yeah. Um, but it, it could be incorporated since, uh, maybe in the main building, mm -hmm. since the roof, let's go. Roof here is at an angle, so it might, it could, say if I put a window here, um, it could fit there. Mm -hmm. um, depends on where the sunlight, the sunlight is mostly coming from this angle though, so it might not hit it at the, the right spots. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you divided the stories with the brick. Yeah. Like um, kind of a string, giant string course or something. Is there an elevator in that building? No, there's not. Uh, well, we, last time we we had our uh, critique, they were like talking about elevator expenses. So there could be an elevator in the back, um, which would, would be convenient. It wasn't but, budgeted in. Is yeah, that so we like yeah. kind of like left that out. You, unless you want to climb steps. Well, the students actually did want elevators in the buildings, and I didn't say don't do it, but then it came up in, the, in, the, in the, on SCAD about the costs. And uh, I know just putting an elevator here, a little one we saw it was going to cost a good bit. So, uh, it's, you know, the cost of elevators compared to what you get otherwise. Uh, also, and Brian, I think you back me up on that. You don't normally want to put an elevator. So, yeah, I mean, the code will dictate based on the number of people in the building, whether it's necessary. I mean, you're looking at generally eighty to $100,000 for an elevator. Yeah. So, you yeah. got to get your friends to carry the bed up the yeah. <laughs> stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. Talks and that's we've already. Okay. Yeah, we can be here three hours if you like. No, that's good. Very good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you can just. Uh, you just did a to see that web page. Yeah, it should just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go there. Uh, let's see where it's yeah. Okay. Um, so my name's Colton. Um, I'm a civil engineering major, uh, architectural studies minor. Um, so I'm going to start off with a video, um, and then I have a kind of a PDF sort of poster that I can go more in depth in. Um, so I won't really talk much in the video, and then I'll kind of dive more into it on the PDF. So I'll kind of let you watch this here. So I was just <clears throat> doing a little fly around, just kind of give 
give an idea of where the <clears throat> how the buildings are laid out and um, everything like that. And then I'll <clears throat> here shortly it'll kind of go down the ground view um, and get more of an idea of the layout of the buildings. This building in the front is kind of the community building. Um, so it's kind of house different things, different places to hang out, um, study rooms, um, open area there to kind of sit out. Um, there's a fireplace there. Um, still moving. Looks like it's stuck. And I mentioned that you were, what was the TA for the class? And so part of his job was to make an initial site plan for everybody to position the buildings on there. And then later they put the students between the building. Yeah, so it looks like it's stuck. Um, but I can go back and kind of talk about the buildings layout. Um, so, like I was saying, um, but the front building is community building. Um, the one kind of in the back um, is more of the apartment style. Um, so those it's, uh, four stories, so there's apartments on each floor, um, similar each level up, which I can show more um, on the PDF. Um, this one in the back here, kind of a little bit shorter than the others, is more of like a quad style housing. Um, so similar to what we already have. Um, and there's six kind of in a row there. Um, and then this building here um, is more of a dormitory style building. Uh, so there's singles and then doubles and, or yes, two person and then four person um, rooms in there. Um, and the floors are pretty much the same all the way up. Um, I can open up this PDF here. Um, so I'll just kind of go through this. So. This is the front view of the first one, so the common area. Um, so I wanted to have, like I was saying, this kind of open area where people could sit, kind of just hang out, relax, maybe work on some work. Um, and the, the fireplace on the left side is kind of open on both sides of the wall. So you can have a fire on both sides. They probably like a, like a gas one or something like that. Um, probably be a little safer than having college students around the actual fire burn the buildings down. But um, so that's kind of the first view there. Um, the second building, like I said, is the apartment building. Um, so this is kind of looking from the parking lot area you can see here, uh, kind of looking at the building. So that's one of the entrances and then there's also an entrance on the other side. Um, so like I said, three floors, there's four apartments um, per level. So two on each side of kind of like the white center area. Um, and then, like I said, uh, this is townhouse style. So obviously a lot shorter, it's only two stories. Um, and each one is kind of like just a little chunk there and there's six of them. And then we have kind of the dorm style building. So this is looking at the back kind of facing um, towards like, uh, the town itself away from um, the founders. Um, so more dorm style, uh, kind of just a basic exterior. Um, and that was four stories as well. So here's kind of a, a just a site kind of layout of the uh, how I have my buildings organized. So this pathway would lead down towards campus, towards the, the library and the quad. Um, and then you can see where you have the other buildings laid out. Um, the center area, kind of just to hang out and relax. And there's windows that face towards the center of each of the buildings. Just so you can see down in the, the center of the kind of like a, an, an additional quad area. Uh, this is kind of just a generic floor plan, just kind of showing you how everything 
is laid out. Um, all the yellow is kind of like common areas. So there's nothing not like seating areas. Um, there's no rooms or anything in there. Um, this uh, is each apartment. Um, these are the quads. And then these are the dorm style building uh, rooms. So two person are the blue and then four person are the gray. Um, and then there's laundry in that building. Um, all the other, um, so the apartment and the quads now have in-house laundry just to make it simple. So you don't have to walk around uh, and travel to get your laundry. Um, so here's a, kind of the site layout I did. Um, so as Ruth was mentioning, um, this is the new entryway off of Cherry Street. So that pathway that you saw in a couple of Ruth photos, um, that's kind of new, uh, make that a new entryway. And then this exit here will lead towards uh, the parking uh, behind the tennis courts. Um, and then it would follow that trail down. And then where it turns to go to Founders, I would make a cutoff to come kind of in between Founders and the new site. Um, and then that would come down into where the parking lot is beside Brinzer. Um, and then remove uh, the road here, uh, just because of traffic conflict, and putting a new housing um, site in there, it's gonna be a lot more people trying to cross the road. And it's already kind of a pain with all the traffic coming in, in and out. Um, and then, it's kind of reworked this uh, area here to make like a centralized uh, kind of seating area with like a tree in the center, fountains around it, um, just a kind of kind of gathering area. I did a different layout of the pathway, um, to kind of work flow a little better. So here's some elevations um, of the whole site. Uh, so top, you can see the east elevation, um, and this is kind of a line here of the ground. Uh, of the site. So in the back is the townhouse style. Uh, you can see the large window um, in the, the common building uh, to let in lots of natural light uh, just to make it feel a lot bigger than what it actually is. Um, and the south elevation, uh, nothing super special here. Uh, one thing I can point out is I kind of sent both of the roofs on the uh, dorm style building uh, kind of opposite ways just to give different architectural um, look, um, and then it's kind of like flat in the center. Um, obviously, you'd have to have some slope to it to have everything drain off properly. And then here is the west and the north elevations. Um, just to give you another view, a uh, couple of views of how the site is laid out. So for building number one, um, this is another view of the front, kind of like the previous picture. Um, and then here are the two floors. So the lower one is the first floor. So you kind of walk in off this path and come in a couple different ways. Um, these blue rooms are study rooms. So people just kind of hang out, study. Um, both of these here are restrooms, male and female. And then I thought to put like a little cafe, maybe just serve like coffee, kind of just some small things um, in there just to kind of make it a centralized area for people to come hang out. And then this area over here is all open to above. Um, with the stairways that go up to the second floor. Uh, this section here is actually the outdoor section that's covered. Um, and these are more study rooms here and then just kind of more seating area, just, just places to hang out for students to, to kind of conjugate. Um, and there's a section of like looking kind of in that big window. Um, so this is all open, uh, tall ceilings. And then you can kind of see this, how the stairwell goes up. Um, so there's that building. The second building, uh, like I said, is the apartment building. Uh, so there's another visual looking at the front um, of the entrance. And then a couple of layouts. Um, so like I was saying, this is apartment so one, two, three, and four. Um, and then that is the layout of kind of how I just designed it. So all this the living is kind of towards the front, looking in towards that common area. So kind of living room and maybe a dining table and then like a kitchen with like a, a breakfast bar and then each bedroom is just a single so one person and they each have their own bathroom um desk and everything like that just to make it simple um, and there's laundry and everything in those apartments and then the center of the building where the, the doors are that's the common area where the stairwell is um so and you can kind of see just a, um, a section, uh, just to give you an idea of the height. <clears throat> so here's the third building, uh, townhouse style. 
Um, so, like I said, there's six across there. Um, they're all the same. Um, so, this is the the uh, first floor on this side. So, pretty much a similar layout: kitchen, uh, kind of the living area with the table, and then stairwell at the back, uh, kind of in line with the, the door. So you can kind of go right in if you wanted to. Um, and then on the other side, uh, there's a, a single room and then a double room. So they both have their own bathroom. Um, and then there's kind of like a little nook in the corner just if you wanted to sit there and study. Um, and then also a section, of that building, uh, just to give you an idea of how that's kind of laid out. And then the last one is the dorm. So, there's a section uh, down in the bottom left-hand corner, um, and then kind of the layout of how I imagined it. Um, so laundry here in the corner, this is the same on all four floors. Um, the two person rooms kind of facing in towards that center area, like I mentioned, and then a common area, and then the four person rooms are to each side of that common area. And that's all I have. So any questions? Question on I think it's interesting you chose different styles of housing within the same design. What made you come up with that? Uh, so there's already kind of, the campus is kind of like that already. Um, so like the Hackman apartments or apartments, um, the quads are the quads. So they're kind of the townhouse style. And then obviously there's dorm buildings around, but they're all spread out. So I was kind of imagining, you know, like if you wanted freshmen to be in this building or whatever, kind of lower classmen and then, as you kind of go up the scale, the juniors and the seniors and maybe graduate students could kind of progress kind of that more independent living style, but it's still in a centralized area so that you know, it's not people like sprung across campus everywhere. Did you, was that Revit yeah. visualization in the beginning? Uh, or what did the, you use the, the, uh, That is called twin motion. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's what I did with and you said, um, so I don't remember trees looking that good right in my last <laughs> yeah. trees. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, I don't know if you went over that, but what are the building materials? Um, so the, for this building here, uh, I kind of wanted to do like, this is like cobblestone up to the second uh, level. And then uh, just a white metal siding um, for this building. Uh, the rest of the buildings all use the same materials, just kind of laid out in different ways. Um, so this kind of uh, white section here um, is like a, a horizontal kind of like clapboard or kind of siding style. Um, and then the, the darker color gray um, is like a Gordon Batten style uh, siding and then obviously the brick at the bottom. Um, but I wanted a couple different planes to kind of split up so it's not all, you know, all one style of material. The last image that you had up just before you moved has an irregular or let's say an asymmetrical roof line. Could you explain why you did Which that? One here? Why is that functional? Which one? Yeah. This one here? Yeah. Um, I just kind of wanted to do something different. Um, like I was saying, like this is the four person side, mm -hmm. and then this would be the two person side. So each of them are kind of sloped the same, um, but obviously one's longer than the other. Um, and then the center is flat. I just wanted to do something a little different, um, just to kind of make it look a little bit more architecturally pleasing than just either a flat roof or, you know, two sloped roofs on each side, kind of put the peak in the center. And my other question was the, the layout is at the, uh, these different angles of the right. building. Yeah. And um, what determined that? Was that an aesthetic decision or is that based on the land? Um, itself. kind of a little bit of both. Um, so kind of back in this area is where it starts to slope down towards like the Bowers writing house. Mm -hmm. So back here, it all starts to slope. So I kind of wanted to keep this building kind of maybe sort of following that slope, but not really perpendicular to it. Um, and this building is kind of offset. So this one is parallel to the existing road, um, or perpendicular mm -hmm. um, rather, and this one will be parallel. And then these are kind of all set at just a, just a couple, like this is all set 10 degrees, I think, or 15. Mm -hmm. And then this one is all set 15 in the other way. So they're kind of, these two are parallel with each other, perfectly mm -hmm. good, um, but they're just clocked a little bit from the other two buildings, just to give it a little bit more 
of a design and it also created more space in here in between the buildings for mm -hmm. gatherings or whatever whatever it would like uh direct south would be like sound like this what I'm trying to see that And Megan is fine arts major, um, or maybe possibly a, probably our fourth architectural baby. This freshman. I encourage you to come to this course. You have to present. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I can enable it. So this is our semester project at the Cedarville Housing. I'm Megan. And I'm Brooklyn. Um, so this is just a video walking through the outside of our design. So this main building in the center here would be more dorm style um, for like freshmen and sophomore students. And then the two buildings on the outside are more independent living unit style. So with apartments for the upperclassmen, just so every class can be closer together on campus and then have these common outside areas because I know Megan's a freshman and lives all the way across campus from me and I'd probably see her more often if we were living closer together. Um, and then here's the site plan here. So we chose to keep Cedar Street just because we want to be a little bit more economical probably. And then also we think it just helps the flow of campus. So the other side on Cherry Street um, there's lots of houses there and we think that that would kind of disrupt the residents who live there to have a bunch of traffic going in and out on that street. Um, yeah, because it is like putting it right through the direct residential neighborhood. That road is very quiet. Those people um, don't really ever have traffic. So sending that straight in there also creates the problem with people have to go entirely through the parking lot to then get to the apartments, to get to Bowers, to get to the founders versus having a street that just goes straight up. Yeah, so we'll probably end up putting, we would put a crosswalk there and probably a stop sign or something. I know there's a stop sign closer to Bowers and that really helps people cross the street to get to Bowers. Um, and then there's an apart or there's parking lots over here be, um, behind the tennis courts. And we're just gonna use those parking lots for this building or these buildings since uh, they, I feel like they're not, normally that full so we would probably just have a path leading um to the parking lots and then here for the renderings um you can see that we kind of just tried to incorporate all the styles from the buildings on campus already so that all the dorms are kind of older architecture styles and then the bower center is a little bit more modern and kind of stands out so we kind of wanted to blend them together more so we use um, the slate from Bowers, and then we had uh, metal on the side, and then there's parts that have brick around the back. And then also, since we're taking away a lot of common space that um, really like brings a lot of the natural flow into campus, um, we wanted to also highlight that lot in our design. So picking the colors from like the outside of our buildings, having large patios, the large per pergola with lots of like tables and whatnot, and you'll notice each building. Um, I don't know how this works, but um, <laughs> but like you'll notice like the apartments up here that I'll show you also have that outdoor living space in the common areas. Just really um, tie that in. It's really important. The um, and then so for this video, we also used um, twin motion like Colton did, and it'll just like quickly go through the inside so you can get a feel for what it'd be like on the inside, and it shows more of how the natural lighting will go through the building. We really wanted to utilize that and hopefully uh, make it a little bit easier to heat and cool. And then just so there's, you can constantly see the outside area. Um, 
And then so you can also see there's a lot of deciduous trees on the back there. So that'll help since the behind is the southern side. So that'll let a lot of the natural light in during the winter to heat the home. And then during the winter when the leaves fall, it'll um, let the sun in more. And then there's the floor plans, just giving the basic layout. So this is for the dorm building. So the first floor we have single rooms. Um, and then upstairs on the second and third floors, uh, that's what the floor plans and are. We wanted to talk about like the whole elevator thing. We did talk about that in our SCAD thing, but having the singles and the like, ADA accessible rooms on the bottom floor does eliminate that possibility of putting that elevator in. Um, and then, you know, like uh, we just want to talk about the different uh, sizes, which will go into the interiors, but there's different, a lot of different size rooms for this building. And then there's the floor plans for the um, independent living units. So on the first and second floor, there will be more quad style buildings. So have an upstairs and downstairs. And then on the top floor, there's a single story apartment that will have access to the balcony. Okay, so these are like our floor plans for those. Since I said we had a lot of different size rooms, they're really going to highlight like the layouts and whatnot because the whole point of having Underclassmen with upperclassmen is really incorporating them into the places they'll want to live. Like you're not going to get a senior that's going to want to willingly go into a dorm when they can go over to the quads and live with all their friends and be in like a large house type of situation. So this is our 26 by 18 quad, which is in the um, the second and the first floor of the ILU. So it just has like the living room, some kind of uh, galley kitchen, and um, like an Eden type of area in the kitchen as well. Just uh, stairs leading up to a triple type of situation for a bedroom with a bathroom. Um, just kind of giving them the independence maybe for like juniors and sophomores. Um, this is just the standard dorm bathroom. What I did with this is like also more environmentally friendly is having the showers be kind of these like stall type situations I was looking into. Um, and then we just have the sink, bathrooms, and then I added these like lockers into the bathroom which is, I don't like carrying all my stuff in the shower. In my dorm every time, all my wet stuff, all my shower shoes, like um, it's really nice having that. I also added towel racks to put towels in so they can dry properly. Um, this is just the standard dorm. Um, we have larger wardrobes and because I didn't give them like dressers. Um, we have shelves, a desk, and a chair. And this is for like a two people. Uh, the single dorm, this is the first floor of that dorm building. We have like a fully accessible bathroom. Um, I kind of did that like L-shaped desk so someone that was in a wheelchair could kind of move into it easier. Um, there is a chair and a smaller wardrobe would fit the space but still have room for someone like says a wheelchair could fit through there, a twin bed and a shelf again. A lot of the furniture is the same just to keep that like flow of the building and it make it easier. Um, the communal bathroom, which is downstairs towards the lobby area of our main dorm building, it just has back like toilets and sinks, and then men and women. Uh, the triple dorm, which is in the second and third floor of um, that dorm building, uh, three beds, a smaller wardrobe, desk, and they do have a bathroom, which is nice, but also eliminates a lot of traffic that we have from those six um, standard dorms coming into that one bathroom upstairs. Uh, laundry room downstairs of the dorm area. Um, only in the dorm area do we have those designated laundry rooms since the apartments and the quads have their own stackable. Uh, there's a stackable a table for folding since they don't have that. It's kind of just like so jumbled in our founders um, laundry rooms and then just like these like laundry basket shelves, which are really nice to have. And then it's the layout of the apartment. Um, the same kind of kitchen set up with a larger living room. They have to have a dining room too. So a lot of work can be done in other spaces. And this is definitely more of like their independent living where you have that access to the outdoor um, patio and whatnot on that third floor. And there's a bathroom and a laundry room as well. No, I guess we can kind of, yeah, get that. <laughs> Oh, okay, so I mean, the one also point that's not on here is integrate the old architecture and the new architecture. Um, Bowers is a great building, but it doesn't necessarily hone in on the older architecture of our campus. So kind of combining that and adding another aspect really will tie that in. So.
Yeah, and then um, just some of the other goals of our buildings were to maintain um, that, like, just incorporate the environment into our buildings, and then also that makes it more economical, just utilizing the sun and then just the positioning of Cedar Street as well. Um, and then just to have a wide variety of living so you can incorporate the different um, classes. Um, and yeah, just highlight the outside uh, nature um, and then incorporate it into the buildings. Do you have any questions? Put something back there so we'll we ask our questions so we can see. Yeah, maybe one of your early slides of everything. So, yeah. Yeah, I like that concept of, um, which Colton just had too, the multiple living types in the same design. Um, also, the incorporating natural daylighting and indoor outdoor spaces and things like that. I think that not only is good practice, but it also makes it more a desirable place to be where you can just sit outside on this day on the patio. Could you explain a little more what's happening in the back in this lower right? Uh, yeah. yeah, so um, we incorporated a pergola as well um, okay. just to filter out some of the um, summer sun since these windows are so big and then hopefully with the lower sun in the winter, um, it'll go through more and just we have a lot of outdoor seating so students can gather there and the different um, grades can go meet there as well. Yeah, because the only outdoor um, sitting area we really have right now is uh, outside the patio of BSC. Mm -hmm. There's actual tables and umbrellas. Um, I know there's a lot of kids right now that can look out into the Dell or into the Brins or Field, but this gives them actually a place to sit right outside the building. And those light areas on the second floor, are those outdoor areas where people could sit? Yeah, so those uh, are up, there. up the third there. floor. Yeah. Over here? Oh, no, yeah, that's second floor. Yeah, yeah both, both of those. Yeah. In the oh, yeah, so the, this is just a balcony accessible to all the um, dorm rooms, mm -hmm. and then these balconies were just accessible to the um, uh, the apartments. Yeah, all the apartments, mm -hmm. seriously. Next is Devin. Uh, he actually is not officially in this course, but he finished a minor a while ago, and uh, he needs to make a test to Is the audio working? Do you know, Dr. Wonderluck? It, it, it should be working. Yes, I tried to use it. Okay. My name is Devin Moore. I'm a junior major with an architectural studies mind, and this is my semester design project for an architecture design student. Is that the right one? Oh, well, that's the only one that's uh, another one. This is last year's. My name is Devin Moore. I am a current junior civil engineer. Oh, it is? It is last year's. Okay. All around the the Marvin. I am a senior here at Elizabethtown College. Uh, I am here to present my uh, senior architectural project uh, that I did through the Architecture to Design Studio, even though I was not actually in the class this current semester. First, I would like to share a, let's see if I can pull it up here. So images from my Revit design for you here. When looking at my graphic design here, I have a major aspect of a horseshoe shape. I really wanted to kind of allow for a more centralized location where it allows for a nice kind of commons in the center. That commons uh, would be a place where students could sit out on the lawn, sit out and enjoy the weather. There would be benches, there would be tables, stuff like that all around the space. Uh, with those buildings, the two buildings that are on the side 
are symmetrical. What I want to have is two buildings that are basically identical to kind of make almost completion to it. I want it to be symmetrical. I want it to look nice and appealing to the eye. Uh, the back shape here will be more of a curved building. Uh, the curve itself, the building rotates, I believe it's a 30 degree uh, rotation uh, to allow for a bit of a different look to the buildings. Rectangles are very basic. Rectangles are very straight. Uh, when I wanted to have that special curve, I thought it would be a nice little twist to change the ideas a little bit. First, I'd like to talk to you about the first building. The first building here is what was symmetrical on either side of it, and I believe that there'll be a very nice addition to the campus life. Uh, with the buildings, there's three floors. The first floor has 16 total rooms. The second and third floor will have 18 rooms. Uh, so there's a wide variety of rooms that will live here. This will be more of a traditional dorm style. All of the dorms I designed today to show you are of that dorm style. I'd like to show you one what the bedrooms would look like. The bedrooms themselves and all of the buildings, all three of them, uh, would have a desk and chair would have cabinets, would have bed frames, and as well as uh, wardrobes. The wardrobes are not pictured here as they would be on the other side of the desks for the basic setup. Of course, students would have the ability to rearrange and move the bedroom to fit however they feel necessary. On the first floor, as I mentioned, there will only be 16 total rooms, as well as a larger lobby space. Uh, this allows for a community space where students can come, do homework, work together, do different things like that. One of the things I would definitely look to add to this space uh, is replacing some of the bedrooms on the first floor through second and third uh, with bathrooms, so that way students can use them properly and not have to worry about any of those issues. Uh, when it comes to a community kitchen, I would like to have it on the first floor, as well as also I'd like to replace a laundry room. So for instance, I would probably have a bathroom over in this area here with the community kitchen and maybe one of these two rooms here, and then like a laundry room and probably one of these two rooms to kind of centralize them, have them all in the same space for the building. Currently, there is just an elevator. I would love to make it ADA accessible, or uh, sorry, staircase. I would love to make it ADA accessible, where also you could have an elevator in those buildings to allow for travel up and down easily. Second floor, as mentioned, more bedrooms. I think that for the smaller buildings, it's nicer to have because it's more of a smaller community. Uh, when you get to the bigger building, there will not be more bedrooms. It will be the same floor plan for each floor. As I mentioned, this is the other building, more of that curved shape. I like the design of it. I like how it kind of still looks simple, but also architecturally pleasing. Uh, when I then went to design the floor plan, I'm like, okay, I need to have a little bit bigger of a actual uh, living space. So I added a large, a decent sized lobby. It's about the same size as the other building itself. I did add two sets of staircases in this building because I felt there'd be a lot more traffic in here. Uh, it helps when there's 32 different uh, bedrooms per floor. I felt there'd be a lot more traffic in this building. These larger spaces here and here would be where either the community kitchen or not the community kitchen, sorry, the laundry room or the community kitchen for the first floor uh, would be located as well as also be where the bathrooms are housed. All of our, my buildings do also have doors on the side to allow for fire escape if were necessary, as well as I would also plan to design a way for a door out the back of the building as well. Um, with all the buildings, I do, I did try to pursue more of a green style. Uh, I wanted to try to find ways to make it there was more natural light in the building, hence where the lobbies have the big open windows. Uh, I also wanted to find ways to have uh, HVAC. Of course, that's a little bit more intricate. I would be looking to have more of a green HVAC system within the whole system. As well as and also, I would look to possibly add some sort of design where I could have more of a sustainable roof, whether it be a green roof, whether it be other different types of permeable surfaces that allows water to absorb, so it's not necessarily just a ponding system. Uh, I really do think that would be a beneficial system for this, as well as I would have numerous trees, numerous plants, all of them planted around. Currently, I do have a bunch of trees here, as you can see by the shadows, but they're not appearing for some reason. I'm not certain on that. Uh, but I do hope you enjoyed my presentation today, and I hope I can answer any questions you have for me in person today. So other thing that I forgot to mention as I was uh, looking to design this, um, I would have actually kept Cedar Street myself. I would have kept that along the whole way. I did not really want to cut that off. Uh, I felt it would be a really beneficial thing. Um, one thing I would actually look to do is around the outside of the buildings, doing more like a parking lot style, similar to how we have the quads, where the back of the buildings are where all the students would park and stuff like that to add an additional parking system for our students on campus. Any questions? The courtyard area, yes. How does that relate to the rest of campus? Like, does that 
to put them to the campus or return? So similar to when you think um, with ICE's uh, or Brooklyn's uh, presentation, uh, this would be facing down towards the library. Uh, so this is basically right across the street from where Oval Residence Hall would be. It would be a little bit further towards Founders than it would necessarily be closer to uh, where the Church of the Brethren is located on campus or just off campus. Uh, but it would uh, be facing more towards the center, facing more of that uh, north direction. Like, there is sort of a concept now created by the library in two dorms, uh, in where kind of where you're sitting in relation to that building. And so one of the things that has to do is consider connecting the two. So this, what you see there would be part of the continuation of the bigger block. Are there entrances on the back? There were, I originally did not put them on here and that's my fault. I meant to do that and it kind of slipped my mind, uh, but I would have entrances at each of the back of the lobbies. Like for instance, the one would be here. There would be some on the back of the bigger horse shape or, or the bigger curved building as well uh, to allow for access from all side, all four sides of the building itself. And how do you imagine that, that entrance courtyard, which is a kind of elegant space, mm -hmm. Uh, being used by the students or just a kind of a clean entrance way? Is, it, is there is there outdoor space? Uh, out, there would be space. definitely uh, outdoor space. Um, when I originally designed it, I kind of put it together to get it to Colton so that we could try to then combine all the things together for, so we had it ready for SCAD. Um, I would look to do more of a patio space. I would look to have more of a wider open area with benches, tables, and stuff like that. Uh, I originally did not put that in the specific design, uh, but the sidewalks that are here, they would probably, especially in the center, would be much more of an open, more of a circular space, kind of having a nice little community center in that middle area there. So, like Devin here, I prepared a video for today, so I'll let that play and then we'll answer questions at the end of it. Hi, my name is Nicholas Sieber. And I'm a senior at Elizabethtown College with an individualized major in architecture. So this year for our senior project, we were asked to create a new plan for campus housing on the backside of the campus. Uh, this spot was historically known as the farm. And before I get into the proposed housing that I, I've come up with, I wanted to highlight some of the aspects of the college. So looking here at the screen, this first photograph picture to a lot of people, you know, it's just this is just a farm. Uh, there's nothing special about it. Um, obviously, this is an old farm, an old black and white photo. But what's really neat about this is this farm here, this is actually the Elizabethtown College campus in what it used to be. So the campus uh, was opened in 1899. And although this isn't a photograph from 1899, this is taken around 1912. And it still highlights uh, the farm that was on the campus uh, when they started building. Now, this farm. Uh, was in existence for several years following the opening of the campus. Uh, look at this next photograph here. This is showing another section of the farm. Now, there were two farms originally. Uh, the campus is a little over 300 acres, and it was split between two 150-acre farms. And moving on through the progression of the campus, here's a picture showing it about 1912. Now, I wanted to include this to highlight um, as the campus was being built, and these two buildings here, the one on the left is Ryder Hall, the one on the right is Alpha Hall, I wanted to show the importance of open space and agriculture that the original, the founders of the campus had. Um, this next picture here, this is also 1912. This is really neat. This is highlighting the agricultural background of the campus. So although they were building these dormitories, they had the lecture halls uh, designed and built on the campus, they still really paid respect to the heritage that was the land that the campus was built on. So here's a picture of students, like I said, 1912. And this is in one of those fields. The farm was still standing at this point, and they're doing uh, planting. They're planting potatoes in this photo. This next one is actually of an orchard that was on campus. This was taken in June of 1910. Uh, this is unfortunately the orchard following the storm. Uh, so you can see a lot of the trees are knocked over here. But once again, I just wanted to highlight that 
you know, if you showed these people these pictures to, to folks nowadays without giving them the context, they wouldn't recognize that this is what the campus used to be. Um, for nearly 30 years following the campus being open, this is what it looked like. It was not many buildings on it. There was still hundreds of acres of farmland within the property, and the college really engaged students with that. So for my proposed housing project, I wanted to focus on the agricultural roots that are found at Elizabethtown College. Uh, so for the initial design, I did hand drafting for these pictures. This is just two point perspective drawings. Here's of a farmhouse. Uh, I would like to include that farm theme in this campus expansion project. So this is looking at the nine acre lot behind uh, the high library. It's currently largely wooded, um, but it does have open land on it. And I would like to try to preserve the wooded lot as much as possible. Um, but like I said, in using the open land, pay respect to the, the farming background that is found on the campus. So here's a uh, farmhouse design. This next one here, this shows a bank barn. Uh, the farmhouse would be a relatively small building. It would uh, hold about 16 to 20 students. This, the bank barn here would be much larger, holding nearly 60. And then fi finally, um, this is the tobacco barn. This would also hold about 20 students. Uh, so grand total would be just about 100 students that could be dormed here. And these buildings would all be situated relatively close to one another. Uh, historically speaking, that's how farms are arranged. So I would like to follow suit with that. Here's an interior view of one of the dorms, very symmetrical. The dorms would be 14 feet wide and 12 feet deep. There would be two windows per dorm. And every two dorms, which would sleep two people, so four people total, would share one restroom. The dorms would also have common spaces on the first floor. Um, and there would be shared laundry rooms on the first floor also for the dorms. Um, within the space, because it is rather confined, it, there's a lot of built-in, the beds, have drawers underneath them. Uh, there's a shared end table, uh, shelves and cabinets that run the entire length of the wall, uh, just maximizing storage within these room for students. Uh, I also just basically ran these through Revit here. So here's just showing a, a representation of the existing lot. It is sloped, um, headed away from the campus. So I made use of that slope to try to prevent uh, too much additional grading needing to be done on it. So actually, the left building here, uh, the second picture you can see it better, this, the leftmost building is the bank barn. Bank barns traditionally uh, are built into the side of the hill. So I decided to make use of the existing grade, put the bank barn on the hill, and then the other two buildings would be situated more on level ground. Uh, the building that's in the very back uh, in this third photo here, that represents the tobacco barn. On the left side would be the bank barn and the right-hand side is the version of the farmhouse. Now, I did want to try to keep this uh, historically accurate in terms of the agricultural roots of the campus. So uh, there are a lot of trees around it, but I also wanted to highlight the orchard, which was sadly removed in the 1920s. So surrounding these buildings are 10 apple trees, um, different varieties, just trying to highlight um, kind of that farming aspect that has been lost over the years. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, um, sorry. Not so much questions, but I gotta give you kudos on looking back into the context of what was here before the school was here. Um, that's a really important way to look at the design progress. And it's actually one of the core areas of a newer facet of, of the design world is uh, in regenerative design. Mm -hmm. You look back historically, even goes back not just at the site, but you do rings of site to town, to county, to state, and you look at all these types of things to really generate um, a genuine design that, mm -hmm. that matches what was here. <clears throat> so I think that was a really that's a home run in my book. So awesome. thank, you. thank you, thank um, you. On a similar front, I, the the, the con the concept of the apple trees in the orchard. That's another movement in that, that same world, but more on the agricultural side, um, like the permaculture and that sort mm -hmm. of thing is, is generating on-site um, food systems and food forests and different mm -hmm. ecosystems to provide food and bring back natural habitat. So really good job. Great, thank you. Yeah, I had a similar reaction. Uh, I think that was really kind of an ingenious connection to make 
that uh, the older agricultural lifestyle was a green mm -hmm. lifestyle. Yeah, sure was. We kind of start over and green it, but there it was. And Lancaster being, uh, of course, uh, agri are you from the area? Yeah, I live in E town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the idea of the barns. I'm yes. using the barns and bank barns, which are so interesting. They are, you know, they are unique to Pennsylvania. You don't mm -hmm. find them sure elsewhere. Are. So that kind of um, historical theme connecting with the older part of campus is um, is fascinating. I know that the curriculum used to be agricultural too. It used to mm -hmm. have some of that, and uh, you know that would be a nice thing for the college to produce. I think the problem is that the semester is not the growing season. Yeah, it wouldn't be the, the best time yeah, for it. <laughs> for summer school. The summer yeah, maybe. Could be, could, could be growing. And and you're, what are you doing there? Red brick? Are you trying to get create a kind of an old barn? Yes, style? it would all be brick. It's Brick's my favorite building material. I, brick and stone. But I like the old brick of like the 1800s when it was still very orange. Mm -hmm. It's I'd like to highlight that and try mm -hmm. to, yeah, pay respect to that. Yeah. Very good. Interesting idea. Yeah, Hugh. How did you find all the old photos? Was it just like the archives? Yep. Yep. I we went through the college archives for all of that. That was that was a lot of fun doing that actually to just go through those pictures. That was really neat. Some neat ones from back there. Any other questions? Thank you. Cool. Uh, how do I get this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have one more Yep, so Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to do this one. Okay, I'm just going to start here. Um, so I have a video, but actually, I feel like it'd be easier just to hold this up and talk. This is my mock up of campus. Here's High Library. Over Brinzer, Cedar Hill. Um, the reason I did this is because I wanted a more inclusive feeling of an upperclassman dorm, like you guys were talking about. And the reason I want this is because I live in the quads this year, and last year I lived in Hackney for about a week. Um, but I love the quads, I love the community aspect, I love just going out, seeing all my friends, just chilling on the lawn. But the problem is, it's so far away that everything, classes, cafeteria, it's like a 10 minute walk. I wanted that same sort of um, style, and I wanted the compactness of Hackman. But also, Hackman is its own animal in that it's also completely secluded. You got parking lots on three sides of it, and behind it is a field. Um, it's not very inviting, and it just doesn't really, it doesn't fit in well as anything besides a self-contained unit. Whereas this, you have the big house, which all of these would have about the same number of people in it. I was thinking 40 per floor, three floors, 120 students. In the center, you get a gazebo, which just adds a nice little hangout spot, glass it in, put some like pool tables, foosball, um, like you'd have in the founder's lobby. And I wanted it to face towards over in Brinzer, so that way you just you see from from high library from the bsc because those are the center points of campus and that's where you get the most amount of people you know at any time during the school day and i wanted it to sort of feed into that so you're looking up the hill and you're seeing other people that you know and you're always just more of a welcoming environment um sort of what I was going for with that. Next, I just want to talk about my portfolio. Um, so this, I've been doing cement and like home renovation and contracting since I was about 14 or 15. It started um, with this 
sort of like shed in my basement, which at first when we moved in the house, my house was built in the 1920s because uh, I live in a steel town. And that was sort of like a wine cellar, root cellar type room. There was a wall at the front where this Corian steel wall is. When I was about eight, my parents knocked it down because they just didn't feel like having a full a dungeon in their basement. It was really kind of off-putting. Um, and so until from the ages of eight to about 14, we just had this like gravel pit down there. And I got the idea one day, I was like, hey dad, what if we just filled it in with cement and then put a little raised floor up? So this is about like six inches of like stage covered in indoor outdoor carpeting. We used the, the wall, which is just Corey and Seal, because it was really cheap and we just had some laying around. Built the door out of old like foreign timber. And that sort of got me into, you know, hands-on around the house project. This I talked about during the start of COVID. It was a hot tub that we started. It started with digging a hole. I moved a few cubic yards of dirt by hand, which was really not fun, but it kept me busy for like a week. Um, put it in, put the rebar in, learned a bit of masonry for that. I don't have any more current photos because it's still not done because I had to go back to school and so did my dad, but he's retiring this year. So that should be finished in like a month or two. But the thing I really wanted to talk about was my SLE, which was a renovation of an indoor pool. So this is a sort of green room, um, greenhouse. And then there was a pool in here, which we removed the pool, raised it up about a foot on a little plywood thing. And then we started tile work and rot removal because it was way too humid in there. There was not a proper filtration. And what we did and what we created was this. It was a, it's like a 70s style conversation pit. This is a large piece of uh, blue limestone, I believe it was. And then what you don't see is there's a hose and some piping right in there. So when you turn it on, this forms a water wall, which also feeds the plants and provides a really cool ambiance and noise for anyone who's sitting in there. Any questions? Oh, I should point out the design was created by me. Uh, over the course of that summer. And most of the work was done by me, my dad, and a, one of the other contractors who was there. What's on your steps? It's, uh, it's actually tile. So, or do you mean the black? No, I mean the pattern on the steps. Yeah, this is actually a really cool mesh tile, um, which you can see me grouting it right here. Oh, okay. They all kind of piece together like Legos, but because of um, because of the angle we had, we had to get a, uh, a tile cutter. And that was honestly <laughs> the most labor intensive part was cutting all these little things. So even though there's um, like a netting on it, we had to get it to fit just right. So there's a whole bunch of tiny little jigsaw cuts. And you can't, you can almost not tell when you look at it here. Like you can see some of them, if you look really close to it, this one doesn't line up perfectly. That's where we made a cut. And there's two slight, slight little cuts in it. Are those cushions down? There? Yeah, um, these are custom, custom couches, which it was, you gotta get the angle of it right. And then got some uh, seating foam and some fabric and it's just stapled in place. They don't come out, which is the one drawback of the design. It's kind of a permanent one, but there is uh, track lighting under it. There's a uh, uh, cable, uh, like phone charger cables down there on this side, which you can't see in the photo. I would have liked to have a handrail, but it didn't really fit in with this. Um, yeah. yeah. So does your family use the space? 
actually this wasn't for my family this was oh. for a commission it was over like a town over that my one of my buddies in high school their neighbors uh wanted something new because they had this an infinity pool uh like one of those pool treadmill things that olympic yeah. athletes use and they just never used it and so we got hired at first just to remove it and it was just gonna be like yeah you can keep the pool but then we got to talking and it's like, yeah, let's see what you can do. And this is what I came up with for him. How do you, is there a drain for the, <clears throat> when that water wall feeds the plants? Yeah, so um, the other guy, uh, John, who's the contractor, he, he was like the guy who did all the tape welding and stuff. So what there is in here is there's a trough, but the way it waters the plants is basically just splashes over and nests them constantly. But down under it, there's just a trough it just cycles it. So eventually they just need to fill it up with like a gallon of water, yeah. which is every, I would say two months. So it's very, it's not bad. yeah, no, not bad at all. What's, what's around it? Is it enclosed, the whole thing? Yeah, um, so there's a crawl space under the floor for accessing the pool when they had maintenance on it. But yeah, it, it's pretty much just a room. Oh, and then it's all you know, it's all glass in. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like a behind a house, like a yep. I'm just trying to see where Yeah, it's behind the house. Oh, you can okay. see the glass walls right there. Okay. Now I get So there's only one more thing, and this is another extra here. Is uh, Nick, our architecture um, individualized major, it's a res restoration a guy too, is musical instruments as well as old cars. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the cars that you restored to? Uh, a 1925 Model T and a 1930 Model A. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So um, there's no video with this. I'm going to pause and we could just gather around, I think. Or you want to bring it up here? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Bring it up here. Maybe I can get it on the camera. Let's see. Can somebody turn the lights on here? I'm holding on. Let's give a little background on these pieces and then a demonstration of them. These are, so I've been interested in record players for probably about 10 years now. And these were two machines that I restored um, for one of Dr. Wunderlich's classes here. It's, I had to do an independent study on it. Um, so these are both uh, spring powered phonographs. This one is an 1898 model. And this one over here is a 1926 model. Um, I can, both of them, I went through the motors in them and redid the cabinets on them. Thankfully, I was able to save the label on this one, which is fantastic. Um, Tom Edison only put it on the lid for 1898 and 99. So it makes it a pretty desirable model to be able to preserve that. But this one here, I can open it up to show you. It's on the inside. It's, like I said, there's, they're all spring cards, so there's no electricity to play the record. Um, even the sound reproduction is completely mechanical. Um, but underneath here, see, it's uh, like a big clock spring inside of it, inside of this section here. This is called the spring barrel. It's a 16 foot long spring. It's a 32nd of an inch thick and an inch and a quarter wide. So pop that out, re-greased everything in there. And I went through and uh, re the teeth and the gears and redid. It's a three ball spring governor up here. And that's what maintains the speed of 160 RPM for playing back the cylinder record. That one plays at 78 RPM. Uh, it has a similar motor inside, but that one you have to take a bunch of screws out to get to the motor. So I'll just show it with this one. Like I said, the, the sound reproduction is completely mechanical in it, so no electricity. Um, this machine, it uses a horn for you to hear the sound. And this one over here, the horn is tucked inside of it. This is called an internal horn and external horn, obviously, the difference is the horns on the outside and the horns on the inside. So I'll give you a little demonstration of the sound. 
being from 1898, it's not the best sound quality, but I think it's pretty impressive considering it's 124 years old. So you gotta wind up spring in it. And then it's just a friction brake. The lever turns off the, it's a felt, uh, felt shoe on it. The lever removes the shoe. And then this part here is known as the reproducer. There's a needle on the bottom of it. It's actually made out of sapphire. And then the sapphire is connected by a wire to a copper diaphragm. And the grooves inside of the record have all the bumps in it. The sapphire rides in a groove, hits the bumps. The bumps make the diaphragm move back and forth. And that converts it from mechanical energy to acoustical energy. And the horn amplifies it so you can hear it. So. This is actually an unto two recording, so only have to twice. So and then you can get bigger horns to get better sound. So I just thought this is the 14 inch which is hat. I have one at home that's 36 inches. I mean the biggest you can get was seven feet long. And that would obviously get you this volume. So if you have like a concert hall or something and you want to entertain folks. Um, yeah. Quickly demonstrate, I don't want to hold you off, so I'll, I'll demonstrate this one over here. This is known as, I mean, I'm sure you may have heard of the Victrola before. Yeah. This is the company that manufactured it. This is the Victor Talking Machine Company. Their name, Victor, is actually really cool. Uh, in the in 1902, there was everybody was trying to get in the market for making phonographs. Mm -hmm. And this is the company that won the patent for it. So they were the Victor over everybody else. So they agreed. The company was originally the Eldridge Johnson Talking Machine Company. And they rechanged it to Victor then, just like, kind of like a, I don't know, thumb in the nose of everybody else, like, hey, we won and you're losers. <laughs> but anyways, this is a portable model. So they made, I have the, the biggest model they made, it was called the VV830X. And I have one of them at home. It stands about six feet tall with the lid open. And it's probably about four and a half feet wide in the sound and it was fantastic. But this is the little portable model. Uh, like I said, this is a 1926 version, but it's still spring powered. So I wind it up. And then this one, you have to change the needles in it every time. The needles are made out of steel. And the first three grooves in the records have an abrasive compound in them. And it cuts the steel needle down to a perfect fit for that specific record. Um, the issue is at the end of the record, though, if you use the same needle and play it again, it still grinds it down for those first three grooves. So it makes the point a little less, like, more of a feel. Yeah, so I was just thinking, there's going to be, like, steel uh, like shavings on does that affect it over time? You have to. Like... Yep, they made the record dusters to clean them oh, off and get okay. that steel out of there. So you have to change the needle every time. The nice thing with these is the sapphire doesn't wear down. Uh, that's the original 120 year old sapphire, and so plays plays gold. So anyhow, <laughs> this one has a lot more volume than this machine. It's a lot more advanced, even though it's 1926. Play in here. There's no volume control on these. It's all or nothing. I could listen to it all, but <laughs> I, I'm sure you guys don't need to hear that. But yeah, so that was just. I also did a player piano over the semester, but that's a little bit. Um, yeah, and I these are just two of the machines I did about eight this past semester. Maybe three years behind this, so I had one at SCAD. They dogged a different machine that had a big horn on it. But yeah, just wanted to highlight two of my favorite machines. I did really like that. And where do you find these? Well, every, anywhere and everywhere. This one, I uh, I traded work for it actually. It was the guy that needed some springs done for his collection, so I did the springs and he gave me the machine. This one I found out in the state down in Lancaster. The player piano is from a company in Lancaster called Redding. So my name's out there, so people call me and let me know when they have them. But yeah, mainly auction for this one. Yeah. Is this the one that comes with the dog? Yeah, yeah, the nipper. <laughs> yeah. Nipper dog. His master's voice, right? Exactly it, yeah. <laughs>
Sometimes you have to go to Victor Cafe in South Philadelphia, which is a restaurant based on the Victrola and Victor Dorp, where the waiters and waitresses are all extras from the opera. And they serve your food, and every now and then they stop, and then they sing. Oh, my oh, gosh. Yeah, you okay. have to go. I'll have it's, to go there. <laughs> it's a one of a kind experience. That sounds great. Yeah. I'll send you the address. Thank you. Any, any other questions or comments? Thank you. Okay, great. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of the eighth annual architectural year-end symposium and some extra cool stuff.